6.3 Definite Integrals and Antiderivatives Table 6.3 Rules of Definite Integrals Number 1 we have order of integration. If you integrate from B to A that's the opposite as integrating from A to B. We have zero property. Integrating from A to A is zero. Imagine you have some curve and we're going to find the area under the curve and we're going to integrate from 1 to 1. Well there's no area in a line. Number three, constant multiple. Integrating from A to B times K. Rule three, constant multiple. Integrating from A to B of K times F of X is the same as the K times integrating from A to B. You can pull constants out of integration. Sum and difference. If you integrate the sum of two functions, that's the same as summing the integration of two functions. Additivity. If you integrate from A to B, and then you integrate from B to C, that's the same as integrating from A to C, and that's what this is saying. The same as integrating from A to C. Max min inequality. If max f and min f are the maximum and minimum values of f on A, B, then the minimum of f times b minus a is less than or equal to integral of f of x is less than or equal to the maximum of f times b minus a. Domination. f of x is greater than g of x on a, b, then the integral from a to b of f of x is greater than the integral uh, from a to b of g of x. Now what that is saying is if f of x is always above g of x. So if you have this function here, this would be the f and you have this function which is g and f, if f is always above g then there's going to be more area uh, under f more area under f than under g using the rules for definite integrals suppose we have the following the integral from negative 1 to 1 is 5 integral from 1 to 4 is negative 2 and the integral of ne uh, from negative 1 to 1 of h of x is 7 so these two are integrals on f of x and this last one is the integral on h of x. Find each of the following integrals if possible. Can we find the integral from 4 to 1 of f of x? Well sure, that's the opposite of this one because the limits have been switched. So this, the first one's uh, negative 2 from 1 to 4, so 4 to 1 must be positive 2, it's opposite. On b, integral from negative 1 to 4. Well if we integrate from negative 1 to 1 and then 1 to 4 uh, if we add the two together that's like integrating from negative 1 to 4 so 5 plus negative 2 this one is 3 integrating from negative 1 to 1 well we know stuff about f of x from negative 1 to 1 it's equal to 5 and with g uh, h of x it's 7 we have 2 times f of x is 5 plus 3 times 7 this is equal to 10 plus 21 which is 31. Letter D integrating from 0 to 1 of f of x. Well they want you to think that if you integrate from negative 1 to 1 is 5 so 0 to 1 must be half of that but that is not true. Uh, not enough information. Letter E integrate from negative 2 to 2 of h of x. They want you to probably think here that if you integrate from negative 2 to 2 that you can just double the 7. That's not true either. Not enough information. Letter F, integrate from negative 1 to 4 of f of x plus h of x. Well, we don't know anything about negative 1 to 4 of h of x. So this one doesn't have enough information either. Average value of a function. The average of n numbers is the sum of the numbers divided by n. How would we define the average value of an arbitrary function f over a closed interval, uh, a to b? As there are infinitely many values to consider, adding them and then dividing by infinity is not an option. So if you had three people uh, taking a quiz, one got an 80, one got an 85, and another person got a 90, that's an average of 85 because you can add them all up, divide by three, and you got it. Well, what if the temperature for the day uh, in the morning, let's say at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, was uh, 30 degrees. And then at 6 o'clock at night, it, it got up to, to 40 degrees. 
Well, the average temperature is not necessarily 35 degrees. It could be, but there's an infinite amount of values between 30 and 40, and temperature is a continuous function. When the temperature raises, it actually hits every single temperature in between, let's say, 30 and 40. So we just can't add all the values up and divide by how many there are. Uh, that's where calculus comes in. If F is integrable on A to B, its average or mean value on A to B is, if we have a function that uh, tracks, let's say, the temperature increasing or decreasing, then we do the integral of the function, but then multiply one over, uh, multiply by one over B minus A. In other words, we're going to divide by B minus A. So we still divide, but we're adding up an infinite amount of values, and that's well, why we need calculus, to be able to add up infinite amount of things and get an answer that's not infinity. Applying the definition, find the average value of f of x equals 4 minus x squared on 0 to 3, and then does f actually take on this value at some point in the given interval? Let's start by finding the average value. We have 1 over 3 minus 0. Now, when students do average value, this is actually the piece they forget. Uh, because you're so wrapped up in doing the integral, don't forget about that piece out front. Now we're going to multiply that times the integral from 0 to 3 of 4 minus x squared dx. We have 1 third times, let's see, we have 4x minus 1 third x to the third integrated or evaluated, excuse me, from 0 to 3. This is equal to 1 third times, we have 12 minus 27 divided by 3 is 9, and then minus, plug a zero in there, well, we just get zero. This is equal to one-third times 12 minus 9, which is one-third of 3, which is 1. Now, we're supposed to find out, does f actually take on this value at some point in the given interval? We have 1 equals 4 minus x squared. When we minus 4, we get negative 3 equals negative x squared x squared equals 3, so x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. So the function does take on a value of 1 at x equals square root of 3, which is the one that would actually be in this interval. Example 4, finding an integral using antiderivatives. Find the integral from 0 to pi of sine of x dx using the following formula. This is actually called, this piece right here, this is part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. In order to find this integral, we're going to take the antiderivative of sine, which is negative cosine of x, and we're going to evaluate that from 0 to pi. So we plug the top one in, the top value, which is negative cosine of pi, and then we always minus negative cosine of the bottom value, which is zero. Now the cosine of pi is negative one, we have negative negative one, and then minus negative, the cosine of zero is one. We have one plus one, the answer to this one is two. Suppose that f and h are continuous functions in that the integral from one to nine of f of x is negative one, the integral from seven to nine of f of x is five, and 7 to 9 of h of x is 4. A, integral from 1 to 9 of negative 2 times f of x. Well, we know the integral from 1 to 9 of f of x. It's negative 1. This is equal to negative 2 times negative 1. And really what we can do is we can pull this negative 2 out front and then take that times the integral. So we have an answer of 2. Letter B, integral from 7 to 9 of f of x plus h of x is 5 plus 4, that's equal to 9. Integral from 7 to 9, which we have information about f and x with this, we have 2 times 5 minus 3 times 4, which is 10 minus 12, we get negative 2. The integral from 9 to 1 of f of x is the opposite of integrating from 1 to 9, so this answer is 1. E, integral from 1 to 7 of f of x. Well, we have to manipulate this one. 
we have to go from 1 to 9 and then we have to integrate from 9 to 7 if we want to be able to find the value of integrating from 1 to 7. This top number here has to match this bottom number on the second one. So we have to actually do the opposite of 5. We have negative 1 plus negative 5. This answer is negative 6. F, integral from 9 to 7 of h of x minus f of x. Well, this one's 7 to 9, so we have to use negative 4 for h of x. Negative 4, and then minus integral from 9 to 7, we have to uh, use negative 5. We have negative 4 plus 5. The answer to this one is 1. In exercises 11 through 14, use n, i, and t to find the average value of the function on the interval. At what points in the interval does the function assume its average value? Let's go to math. Number 9 is f, n, i, and t. And we're going to put the function in first, negative x squared. Divide by 2. The variable is x, and we're integrating from 0 to 3. We get an answer of negative 4.5, but don't forget, here's what we're doing. We're taking 1 divided by 3 minus 0 times the integral from 0 to 3 of negative x squared over 2 dx. The negative 4.5 is just this piece right here, and then we have to multiply that by 1 third or divide by 3. And the answer is negative 1.5. The average value is negative 1.5. Now we're supposed to find out does this function take on negative 1.5 in the interval 0 to 3. So we want to know does negative x squared over 2 equal negative 1.5 from 0 to 3. Well we can multiply by 2. We have x squared equals 3. So x is equal to, because we can divide by a negative also, plus or minus the square root of 3, which is inside 0 to 3, actually. The positive square root of 3 is in this interval. In exercise 15 through 18, find the average value of the function on the interval without integrating uh, by appealing to the geometry of the region between the graph and the x-axis. We have f of t equals 1 minus the square root of 1 minus t squared from negative 1 to 1. We are finding the average value. So we're going to take 1 over 1 minus negative 1, that's 1 minus negative 1, times the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of t dt. Well this is a circle that start a half a circle that started below the x-axis because of this piece right here. This is the bottom half of a circle with radius 1 and then we push that circle, that half circle, up 1. Well now we have to find the area under the curve because that's what the integral is. This is area under the curve. Well area under the curve is this little slice right here. Now let's, let's uh, take the rectangle and let's draw a rectangle like that. So if we take the area of this rectangle, which is a 2 by 1, so the area of a rectangle is a 2 by 1, and we minus out, minus out this much right here, the area of the half circle, what's left is the area under the curve. We're going to minus out 1 half of pi r squared, but the radius is 1. So we have 2 minus, the radius is 1, so we have pi over 2. The area is, there's the area under the curve, and then we're going to multiply that by 1 half. We have 1 half times 2 minus pi over 2. That, this is the area under the curve, and then we bring down the 1 half to find the average value. Now if we distribute that through, we get 1 minus pi over 4. In exercise 19 through 30, interpret the integrand as the rate of change of a quantity and evaluate the integral using the antiderivative of the quantity as an example for. In other words, well, let's just find the value. The antiderivative of sine is, or the antiderivative of cosine is sine, and we're evaluating this from 0 to pi over 2. Now to do that, you plug in the top value, sine of pi over 2, always minus, and then sine of plug in the bottom number, which is 0. The sine of pi over 2 is 1, and the sine of 0 is 0. 
The answer is 1. The antiderivative of secant squared is tangent of x, and we're evaluating this from 0 to pi over 4. Uh, that's equal to the tangent of pi over 4 and then minus the tangent of 0. This is equal to 1 minus 0. This one's also equal to 1. The antiderivative of 3x squared is x to the third. We're evaluating from negative 1 to 2. And that's 2 to the third minus negative 1 to the third, which is 8 minus negative 1, which is 9. In exercises 31 to 36, find the average value of the function on the interval using antiderivatives to compute the integral. If we're finding average value of sine of x, we want 1 over pi minus 0 times the integral from 0 to pi of sine of x dx. We have 1 over pi times the integral of sine is negative cosine of x and we're evaluating from 0 to pi. We have 1 over pi times negative cosine of pi minus negative cosine of 0. We have 1 over pi times uh, cosine of pi is negative 1 and then we have minus negative 1. 1 over pi and this is going to be times 2 plus 2 which is 4. We get 4 over pi. y equals 1 over x. We're evaluating from e to 2e. We have 1 over 2e minus e. Don't forget about that piece out front. Times the integral from e to 2e of 1 over x dx. Well, the antiderivative of 1 over x is the natural log of x. We have 1 over e times the natural log of x evaluated from e to 2e. Let's plug in the top value. We have 1 over e times natural log of 2e minus natural log of e. We have 1 over e times the natural log of 2e is, well, just natural log of 2e. There's not much we can do with this one. Then minus 1. And I'm sure there's some decimal value for this, but uh, we'll leave the answer as it is.